Sunday, and I'm currently on Patreon live sprints because I am hosting a 24 hour readathon today with my patrons that is called the Reset Readathon, where basically the goal is just to do anything you need to do today, whether it's just sit down and read, whether it's to get some stuff done around your home, whether it's to do some chores and errands that you've been meaning to go out and do, whatever it is you want to do, that is the point of today. My goal for today is to try and read three romance books. This might be a bit of an ambitious TBR stack. I, I get that. I see that. But it's it's what I'm going to attempt. I'm going to be physically reading two of these and listening to one of them as an audiobook. So the one I'm going to be listening to as an audiobook is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I have started this one. I'm right at the start. This is following somebody who is a ghostwriter for a popular romance author. And she's got a bit of writer's block. She goes to her new editor and he basically just says that he needs her to write. He needs the book by the deadline. She goes home and he ends up turning up on her doorstep as a ghost. And I think it's a romance between the two of them. I don't really know, but it sounds like it's going to be fun. Every time I saw this one in a bookshop, I felt drawn to it because it's a book about books. I love books about books. So this is going to be my audiobook for the day. Then my two physical reads are these two. So the first one, the one I've started is Something Wild and Wonderful by Anita Kelly. All I know about this is it's an LGBTQIA plus romance. It is set around the PCT, which is the Pacific Crest Trail, which is an over 2,500 mile trek that goes from the border of Mexico to the border of Canada. It's something I'm really interested in. I've read Wild by Cheryl Strayed, which is a non-fiction memoir about Cheryl Strayed's journey on the PCT. I've watched the film for it. I've watched several vlogs about it. I just find the whole thing beautiful and so interesting to see people's reasons for doing it. So this is following two different people who are on that trail and I think keep bumping into each other along the way. I don't really want to know much more about that. I only bought this book yesterday, so I'm going into it without knowing much at all, but this is going to be my first physical read and then my second one, if I can get to it, is going to be Yinka Where Is Your Husband by Lizzie Danny Lola Blackburn. This is following a woman who wants to find love but her mum wants to find it for her and then her cousin gets engaged and she needs to find a date for the wedding. I'm assuming her mum's going to play quite a big role in this one as well, but I think this sounds like it could be really funny. I'm hoping these will all have elements of comical moments to them, but I am not a big romance reader. That's the twist of this video, I suppose. I don't read a lot of romance. At this time of year, I tend to lean towards it a little more, but I don't read a great deal of it. I have tried to buy more recently in a way to open myself up to the genre. So this is not only a challenge vlog in the sense of trying to read three books over the course of one day, but it's also a challenge vlog because it's not a genre I read much of and I would like to try and read a bit more of it. So I'm diving in with these three. I do have other things I need to do today, such as go to town and get a new driving license photo, which I've been putting off for far too long. I've also got to do some cleaning around my flat, so it's going to be a reset day for me as well. But this was all inspired by my recent reset video. If you haven't seen that, I will pop a link up above me now. I loved filming that video so much. It's a video where I basically start to declutter my bedroom and then it ends up being a whole thing of like changing up the room a little bit. I'm so pleased with how it turned out. So if you want to watch that one, please do go check it out. But this was basically inspired by that video because I did that as a reset video and I really enjoyed it. So today is like a little additional reset day on the end of that because I basically only worked on my bedroom and I need to do other things in my flat. So that's the plan for today. Will I achieve these three books read? I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. I think having one of them as an audiobook is going to be a massive asset, but we'll see how it goes.
So I have an hour left of The Dead Romantics. I am this far through and I'm really liking this. This has definitely taken a turn that I didn't necessarily expect it to. I thought that this would be more enemies to lovers and it's kind of more like fondness to lovers, which I'm actually quite enjoying reading about. I feel like there's a couple of typical tropes this could have fallen down and it hasn't and I'm glad it hasn't because they would have been things I would have found frustrating. There's a really nice supportive family unit in this as well which I always really enjoy reading about and it just feels like it's just such a calming soothing reading experience like it deals with grief but it deals with remembering people with love and celebrating their life and I really love that side of things that it's taken so I'm really enjoying this I have pretty much just spent all day listening so far to that rather than doing any physical reading of something wild and wonderful which I do intend to do very soon but we're about to come off of sprints and have a chat and then go back onto sprints again after our break so then I do intend to sit down and do some physical reading but as this is also like a reset readathon I've been doing bits around the flat just tidying and cleaning and sorting little bits out so now that I've done all of that I am freeing up the rest of the day to physically sit and read and then at some point Point, come back and obviously finish the last hour or so of the audiobook of The Dead Romantics. So I'm about 74 pages into my physical read for this readathon, which is something wild and wonderful. And it definitely is something wild and wonderful. I can so clearly see this in my head playing out as a film. I think it would make such a good film. I think because I've consumed a lot of visual content already about the PCT, this is very strong in my head as to what each stage looks like and what each stage of the PCT involves. And I think that's really helping me have a good base to already establish where they are and be able to see that visually in my head even before the author started to describe it, which I think is adding another level to this for me that I'm really liking. I love the two main characters. I think they're great. I will say I am sometimes having to remind myself who is who and who has got what traits to them because we're not getting... Initially, I thought this was going to be like one chapter one chapter from one perspective and one chapter from another. And I think I might have preferred it if it did do that because it's actually just coming from both their perspectives at once. We might get one thought from one of them and then one thought for another. And I think that it's slightly throwing me as to who has got each trait assigned to them at the moment. But I think that's probably still because I'm quite at the start of this. Also, what's not really helping is that one of the characters in this is called Ben and one of the characters in The Dead Romantics is called Ben. And the Ben in The Dead Romantics is a ghost. And I was reading this and the character Ben was like interacting with something and touching something, which obviously the ghost character in the Dead Romantics cannot do. And I was reading it like, how is he suddenly interacting with things? Like, why is he not like going straight through them in his ghost form? And then I was like, well, that's because this is a different book. So that's, that's a bit of a me problem for choosing to read two romance books at the same time with two sim the same names in each book. So that's causing me a couple of bits of confusion, but I think I'm out of the other end of that now, although I do still need to finish The Dead Romantics, so that's probably just going to throw me back into the confusion when I start listening to that one again. <laughs> this is very lighthearted and fun at times, but then it also deals with really sensitive topics. It talks about one of the main character's experiences very recently coming out to his parents and that they've essentially disowned him, and he's shared that information with the other character, and it's about how they're reacting to that, and why he's why they're each doing this trek i think is is kind of going to come into play with it as well i think that's one of the big things for the pct is that it's always the reason as to like everyone's doing it for a different reason and what is that reason so i assume that's going to kind of come into it too there's been some really honest and open conversations in this already about the character that has been disowned by their family and about what that has been like for them and uh, that they are essentially doing this alone and no one really knows that out there and the contrast between these two characters that we've got somebody that's doing this completely alone and has that isolation from the world in the way that they're doing it versus somebody who their whole family all of their friends know they're doing this they're in constant contact with them on their phone it's a real contrast and I think I'm enjoying seeing that side of it as well. I love that we've got different traits of kindness in both Alexi and Ben as well. That's a really nice feature of them. They're both clearly very kind people, but we're seeing that kindness come out in their interactions with different people along the trail as well. It just feels like one big 
vlog of a story. Like I've watched so many vlogs of people on the PCT. This just feels like reading one of those vlogs and I love it for that reason. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm a little bit of a PCT fangirl. <laughs> I'm very much enjoying my reading experience. I would love to actually do this trek one day. I don't know if I ever will because it's like months, like three-ish months that it takes to do it. So you obviously need to have a sizable amount of time away from work. And it's obviously a huge physical undertaking. I would love to think one day I could possibly be in a position to do it. I don't, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen, but the closest I can get at the moment is reading about it. So I will gladly take that. I'm loving this book and I, I want a film of it. I just, I think that would be great. So I'm gonna jump back into reading now. I don't know if it's realistic to think I'm gonna finish this by the end of the day, because as per usual, I've set myself this challenge, started reading the book, really enjoyed the book and don't wanna feel like I'm rushing it, but we'll see how I go. I've got an hour left still of the Dead Romantics that I also need to finish, which that'll definitely be doable, but I'm gonna try and read as much of this as possible. It is currently, 517 so it's a lot later on in the day than I would like but I have nearly finished one book and I've got all of the kind of reset things around my flat done that I needed to so I feel like I've been successful so far I'm just gonna stop talking and crack on with reading now finished a book. It is 8.37 on Sunday night and I finished my first book. It's slightly later in the day than I would have liked to have finished my first book, but I was listening to The Dead Romantics as an audiobook on and off throughout the whole day. I bulk listened a lot this morning and then I listened a bit whilst I was cooking dinner and whilst I was cleaning up from dinner and just sorting a couple of bits out around the flat. So I basically got my whole flat ready for the, the week ahead and all cosy and nice and just ready for an evening of reading the remainder of my other physical read, which I am very much looking forward to reading some more of, but my audiobook read is now finished and I gave it a four out of five stars. This one had a lot more heart to it than I expected it to have. I have read from Ashley Poston before and really enjoyed what I have read, so I probably shouldn't have been surprised that it did have that kind of heart to it, but it definitely for a book that literally has a ghost as a character I didn't expect it to be so ingrained in grief which was probably silly on my end but it really was and it was ingrained in like kind of different people's grief and what people need to be able to move on to say goodbye and the beauty of celebrating a life and things like that it just it it hit hard harder than expected but it was really good I liked the romance one of the things I was waiting on seeing how they would do is how they were gonna kind of lead the romance, what direction the romance was gonna head in, because obviously a romance between a ghost and a human isn't isn't the easiest. So I was really intrigued to see what would happen there, and I'm generally really pleased with the outcome of this book. I think it did a good job of wrapping up. Ashley Poston has a really fun and playful writing style at the same time as having a lot of meaning behind the writing, and I think that was captured perfectly in this book. So if you want a good audiobook to listen to, this is this is well worth it. I'm really glad that it did live up to my hopes because this is one I had seen about for ages before I actually picked up a copy. So I'm glad I did pick up a copy and I'm glad I enjoyed it, especially as this being the first book I finished for this vlog. As I said at the start of this vlog, I'm not a big romance reader. I don't read it very often and I, I, I read it seasonally. I definitely read it more at this time of year because I want something that's easy and fun and just something I don't have to think too much about. But generally, I find that the plots get recycled quite a lot and you generally tend to know how it's gonna end versus other genres of books. You just know there's probably gonna be a happily ever after at some point. So it, it kind of removes that guesswork, but sometimes I want that guesswork removed. So as someone that doesn't usually read a lot of romance, I am glad I did enjoy this romance. So that is one book down. I don't think I am gonna get through to Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? I just don't think it's gonna happen. I think I need to accept defeat on that one. It was probably a bit overly ambitious of me, but what I am gonna try and do for the remainder of this vlog is finish something wild and wonderful. I am currently just before halfway in this. I have under 200 pages left, which still sounds like quite a lot, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. There's a little bit of a frustrating moment that we're in at the moment that I'm like, why? But in a good way. 
and I'm liking the direction the story is going in. I love the romance, I love the characters. As I've said already, I love the setting. I've talked about this in more detail, so I won't go into that and repeat myself, but I'm really liking this and I would like to see if I can try and finish this by the end of the day. It is a Sunday night, so I pretty much just have no plans but to sit and chill and read. I'm still on Patreon live sprints for our readathon. So hopefully that's what's gonna happen tonight. Fingers crossed. <laughs> that's the plan, but we are one book down out of a TBR of three. And hopefully by the end of this video we'll be two books down, but I don't, I, I don't wanna rush it, but I wanna finish it. I, I like the challenge. So that's the challenge for the rest of the vlog. Try and finish. 200 pages or just under 200 pages of this book. Do feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any faith in me being able to do this. I don't like to set myself challenges that I think are too unrealistic, but I, I feel like this one might be, but we'll see. Let me know in the comments now before I continue on with the video if you think I can finish this book by the end of this vlog. I'll see who has faith in me and who doesn't. <laughs> I don't have faith in me. It is 10 to 11 and I have got about 120 pages left of this book. I don't think I'm going to finish this before like midnight tonight, but I think I could finish it before I go to sleep. At least I now feel competitive with myself, so that's what I'm going to try and, and do anyway. <laughs> Still absolutely loving it. We've had some sex scenes and some pretty spicy scenes in general in this book. They've been approached in such an honest an open way where two people are able to have a conversation about how they go about exploring each other for the first time and the trust and the consent that's there. And I just, I love that we've got that in this book. I just, it's so fantastic. Sorry, who is messaging me? It's Lauren messaging me because I've been telling her how much she needs to read this book. I'm just throwing this book at people now. So if you haven't already added this to your basket of your next book haul, add it. It's so good. Anyway, I've, I've got myself like a little support system here to just sit against for the next I don't know few hours as I try not fall asleep <laughs> and read this book but I am I'm definitely I'm fading a little bit not gonna lie but it's fine it's fine I'm gonna do it I just every time I read it I'm just diving into the pages like it's so addictive the writing style is just so easy to read and so enjoyable that it's such an easy book to stay up late reading so I feel like I I'm not gonna have any trouble Cue the next clip of me being me just like conked out, asleep, wrapping up the vlog, not able to do it. I'm calling it. <laughs> do you know what else I like about the sex scenes in this book? They feel real. They feel like actual interactions between two people. I personally am not a big fan of the ginormous fantasy elaborate sex scenes that we get in some books. Like for example, I don't know, when people are having sex flying about in the air. I, I like my sex scenes to be semi mostly entirely realistic <laughs> i just find that better personally that's my own taste and i feel like this it just feels like it's an actual interaction between two people the characters feel very real to me and the situations that they're in feel very real so yeah it's good it's very very good and i'm gonna stop saying that now and actually go read it instead of just telling you i'm gonna go read it sorry about the noise of the fan it's 11.20 now, so only 40 minutes has passed <laughs> since I last updated you, but, or something like that, I don't even know when I, when did I, I'm very sleepy, and I don't know why I'm so sleepy, because I wouldn't only be this sleepy at this time of night, but I think it's probably just because my eyes have been, like, staring at a page for so long, but I'm still determined by my goal. I have about 70 pages left, and I'm gonna go read in bed. This could be a great idea, or a terrible idea. Not really sure which, but we'll find out. I'm gonna go just get ready for bed, get in bed, or like not properly in bed because there's a heat wave at the moment and going under the duvet is not what I wanna be doing. Except it really is what I wanna be doing. I hate not sleeping under the duvet, but I'm just gonna sleep under like a, um, a blanket that I have. And I'm gonna finish this book. Maybe. <laughs> okay, this could be a really bad idea, but I'm gonna go read in bed. I've just finished sprinting with my patreons for the day it was a really good live show with them i love doing these live shows they just they're so lovely and cozy and oh that's my phone telling me that i should go to bed <laughs> they're so lovely and cozy and wholesome and it's just such a nice community so thank you to all my patrons for joining me and if anyone ever does want to participate in these it is all linked down below and i try and do them monthly if i can the readathons but i do weekly live shows as well so lots of things but anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna read in bed could be a mistake could be could be a big mistake. I've got about 70 pages left, which I think I could possibly do within an hour, maybe. But I could, 
equally get into bed and then just get more tired. So I'm gonna get ready for bed. I'm hoping that like washing my face and taking my makeup off will make me feel more awake maybe? I don't know if that's the right logic. Also, just a note, this book, I've completely forgotten what the other book is called. Oh, right, Love and Other Disasters. A little picture of it, tiny picture on the back. You can't see that. This is like the second book in that world. So there's a slight crossover of some characters from the other book. I haven't read the other book, but I do own it. And this kind of does go into a little bit of what happens in that other book. So just to make you aware that there is another book and that one chronologically does come first, but it doesn't hinder the reading experience of that. I suppose it just kind of gives you a little bit of spoilers for the other book, but at the same time, I feel like they would be obvious things anyway. I don't really feel like I've been spoiled too much. Anyway, gonna get ready for bed and then I'm gonna get in bed. And it's great, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a good decision. It's not gonna be stupid. I'm not gonna instantly fall asleep. I thought we could do like a get unready with me. Um, <laughs> so I tried to put my camera on the, uh, the shelf in front of my mirror in here and I don't think it's, I don't think it's gonna work. Hang on. Can it work? trying to prop it up with various things. Um, what about you? Maybe that? I don't know. All right, that'll do. Okay. I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I'm putting some, some shit on my face to take my makeup off. It's La Roche-Posay, Rosé Liac makeup removing gel. It's oil free. Normally I would get in the shower, but I'm gonna go for a run in the morning, so I can't be bothered to do that because I'll just shower again in the morning anyway. So we'll just use some of this for now, which you don't actually need any water with, but I personally prefer to take it off with water because I find it's more cleansing. So we're gonna do this. Am I a beauty influencer yet? Has it happened? Okay, I'm hoping the water will wake me up. That's the goal. I'm kind of running out of all my moisturizers at the moment, but I'm gonna use my NZ Meon Lush. I normally do have a bit of a better skincare routine than this, but I'm really sleepy and <laughs> my brain is turning to mush, which is really great for this vlog, I'm sure. I feel like any time I get sleepy in a vlog, it's just, it loses all semblance of any kind of structure, really. So, sorry about that. Just gonna let that, you know, do its thing, absorb into the skin. That's, that's, that's what it does. And brush my teeth with my Suri toothbrush. If you don't have one of these, where have you been? I got so many ads for this toothbrush for like probably the best part of a year, if not more than that. And I finally was like, okay, cause my electric toothbrush was pretty old. It wasn't doing so good anymore. So I got this and it's so good. It has like a polish setting. So like it brushes your teeth and then you can put it on a polish setting and you'd probably be like, well, what's that gonna do? It, it does, it does things. So yeah, this is my toothbrush and it's green. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. Okay, and now because it's a Sunday night, I get to put this magical stuff on. I had oily skin, uh, like, eight months ago. I had, like, a skin test thing where they put the thing on your head and it came back that it was oily skin. So I was doing all these things to try and help it. And I kind of pushed my skin the other way so that I had some oily skin and some dry skin. I went into Boots and I was like, is there anything that I can kind of do about this? And they recommended me this thing. And it's magical. It not only smells amazing, but it genuinely does rebalance everything. And I use it twice a week and I have got like the whole bottle left, which is good because it was bloody expensive, but it was so worth it. It's Clarins. And I don't really know much more about it than that, but there it is. <laughs> it's Hyal Orchid Blue. Why am I trying to read that? It's a, It says it in English underneath, it's Blue Awkward Treatment Oil. And it's radiant, it moisturizes, restores radiance. And um, it does, you know, makes me glow. It does make me glow, but it smells really nice and it does help my skin. And I put it on every Sunday and every Wednesday. Okay, that is my extensive skincare routine done. I know, impressive. Now I'm gonna get into my pajamas. Ah, okay. Time to get reading. Wow, I'm very shiny and very yellow. It doesn't get any better. Okay, fine. I've got 25 pages left of this book. I thought that this was gonna be just a kind of easygoing romance set on the PCT and it's so much more hard hitting than that. And just very powerful. The story has 
now transition to being told through letters, which is a really, really fantastic way to get across what the these various different characters are feeling towards various different people in their lives and it's just really powerful seeing what Alexi has gone through with his parents disowning him because he's gay and everything that that has caused him is just such an emotional reading experience and it just leaps right off the page at you and you just want Alexi and Ben to be happy but Alexi has just gone through so much and has so many internal battles that he still seems to be facing and these letters are just beautifully capturing the words that he he just feels he can't speak and I just think that it's being done in such a beautiful way and I didn't expect it to be to take this kind of a turn I yeah <laughs> We're, we're past midnight now, I'm definitely very tired, and my brain is, like, fighting to stay awake, but at the same time, I can't not look at this book, I can't not read these these words, and I know these are fictional characters, but they are feeling more and more real to me, and this is so much more than just a romance that I thought it would be, so I think it's quite clear that this is brilliant and I think it's probably gonna be a five star read to be honest it's just again surprised me the dead romantics and this both of them surprised me so I probably need to change my tune about saying that I don't really read much romance because the two romance I read today I've really enjoyed so I'm gonna read the last 25 pages now finished it. I actually didn't think I would tonight. So kind of proud of myself. I think that's like 650 pages. No, like 700 pages I've read today with both books combined. I think this has got to be a five star. I've got to run it through a core part, but I've literally just finished it. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful. So fitting for it to be about the literal journey of the PCT, but also the journey of these two in their relationship and everything that comes with that, the struggles, the joy, the growth and the learning about each other and what each other needs. The decisions that were made by these characters were actually, you know, well thought out. They were decisions that allowed them both to benefit rather than one of them to give something up and I really liked that about it as well. Oh, I just really loved it. It was so good. I'm really glad that I spotted this literally yesterday in Gaze the Word. I'm so glad I spotted it. There is a vlog about that whole London trip if you do want to see that, that I probably should have told you about sooner, but I'll pop a link up here. I am gonna now go to bed because it is 1am. Those last few pages took me a long time to get through because I was just really absorbing everything, but I hope that you've enjoyed this vlog, whatever this vlog has been. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.